Well, it turns out that even U.S. generals can face investigations over leaking classified information. The former second highest military official in the U.S., General James Cartwright, resigned in 2011 as the vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Now, he is at the center of an investigation over his alleged leaking of information about a U.S. and Israeli-led cyber attack on an Iranian nuclear facility. The virus is called Stutznek, and it's temporarily disabled a fifth of Iranian centrifuges that were used to enrich uranium. Well, back in June of 2012, the New York Times wrote about Stutznek in an article in President Obama's acceleration of cyber attacks. The article included detailed information from meetings in the White House Situation Room. Well, NBC News revealed last night that General Cartwright is being targeted by the Justice Department probe into the release of classified information about Stutznek. Is this the highest level of government official to be accused of leaking information to the press? To discuss this, I'm joined by Michael Cohn, president of the National Whistleblower Center. Hi there, Michael. So at this point, do we even know if General Cartwright is a whistleblower? No, there's no way of, of, of determining that. Right now, what we have is a leak investigation. Uh, in fact, what you have is a leak of a leak investigation uh, where the Justice Department is saying that they are investigating uh, General Cartwright, which you find a little, I find a little disturbing because all of a sudden with the uh, Snowden investigation going on, it gives cover that the, that the administration uh, goes after high and low level people at the same time. But this is a very different situation. You, the, it's very different than Mr. Snowden. Uh, to say that General Cartwright is a whistleblower, uh, th there's no indication of that at this point. You do have an individual who had access to information sharing it uh, with the, the news media. Uh, what, maybe it was authorized, maybe it wasn't authorized to be shared. Uh, was it authorized with a nod and a wink from the administration? Potentially. I mean, mm -hmm. so at, at some point, uh, the facts have to come out. And what you, the problem is, uh, where's the investigation of the leak from the Justice Department who's saying that they're investigating uh, uh, the, the general? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, would Cartwright be the highest level, okay, if we can call him a whistleblower at this point, would he be the highest level that the Obama administration has, has gone after to date? Uh, I would think so. Okay. Uh, Okay, so General Cartwright is being investigated, yet has to, he's not been charged with anything yet. What would the charges be like that he would face if they find anything? Well, the same thing that you see with Mr. Snowden. Uh, I think another issue that you have to look at, when the Obama administration first came in, into office, there were a lot of potential investigations that were ready to go forward dealing with the Iraq war. Uh, Vice President Cheney and others were associated with leaking potentially false information uh, to the news media to justify the war. So the first thing President uh, Obama did, and one of the first things he did in office was say, let's sweep that all under the rug, let's start off with a, with a, a new clean slate. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting. When it's a prior administration, you sleep, you, you know, that was done for political reasons. So the, the, the real problem you have is these investigations can become very political. And just announce the timing of the announcement of when they're going after General Cartwright is maybe a political move on the administration's part to give cover to the Snowden investigation. It's too complex and too difficult to cut into sound bites and say this is why this is happening, this is why this isn't happening. You have to have a level playing field and you have to have an opportunity with whistleblowers in federal government and around the world to have a place to go where they can safely provide information. One thing that's important is the news media can be a very important vetting outfit. When this information comes to like the New York Times, they just don't release it wholesale. They call the administration up. Will this compromise any ongoing programs? Or will people's lives be put in jeopardy? They don't report this information unless they know that there's so, some assurances of what's going on. And in fact, uh, the, the administration would typically also have the opportunity to go into court to stop it if they had a legitimate right or reason to try to stop the publication. So in this case, you also have this other issue of uh, pre-pub clearance 
high level officials in the government who have access to this material can go and get pre publication clearance, which means the government looks at it and says, Yeah, you can publish this, you can't publish that. So, why General Cartwright wouldn't have done it in this case? I don't know. There's too many unanswered questions to say he's a whistleblower, not a whistleblower. Why was this information being released? Uh, was it to help the administration? Mm -hmm. Was it because it needed to be released for some other reason? It's, it's too speculative. Mm -hmm. Well, how thoughtful of the New York Times to call the administration before they release any information. That's, that's really thoughtful of them. Uh, but let me let me get on to this next question. We're running out of time here. General Cartwright, as I understand it, was one of the architects of this program. Can he actually be considered a leaker since he was one of the architects of Stutznik? I mean, how does that work? He's being called a leaker because he was giving information at a point in time that the Republicans believed it was helpful to the Obama administration's reelection effort. Mm -hmm. And they demanded an investigation to find out who was the source of the leak. I mean, at some point, he is an integral part of government. He was. Michael, excuse me for interrupting you. We have to leave it there. That's all we have time for. Really appreciate your input. That was Michael Cohn, president of the National Whistleblower Center.